So how many samples do you need to take? I've gotten this question a few times in my life uh, from people wondering, diff you know, taking different samples from things. Um, but what you need to do in order to answer this question is first off, find out your maximum error. Okay, your maximum error is part of the confidence interval formula. And so here it is. And it's located, it's that plus and minus thing that we were doing with confidence interval in the previous video. So if you need to kind of see confidence interval and how to do that and or need a refresher, go look up that video on confidence interval. But uh, this piece on the that we're adding and subtracting is called the maximum error. And so we're going to take that maximum error and rearrange it. So, um, so in order, so let's just go ahead and solve that thing. So z over alpha divided by 2 times sigma over the square root of n. And again, stig sigma is standard deviation. Um, this is your z-score or whatever tolerance you're looking at for. This is your standard deviation and this is the amount of uh, the amount in the sample. So we're really looking for the amount in the sample. We're looking for n. So the first thing I would probably do is uh, I'm going to rewrite this so maybe so if your algebra skills are a little weak maybe you can follow along. I'm going to get rid of the parentheses so we have something like that so E is equal to your Z score times your standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So the first thing I'm going to do is cross multiply. This is E over 1 so if you cross multiply you have your standard error times the square root of N is the same as your z-score, uh, that's alpha divided by 2, times sigma. Um, and then all you got to do is divide by e. So if you divide both sides of the equation by your standard error, now we know that the square root of n is equal to z, time, uh, your z-score, you know that alpha divided by 2, doohickey, and then sigma, uh, over E. And then your last step is to eliminate the square root and to eliminate that you just square both sides of the equation. So in our final formula for finding out sample size is your sample size is always equal to your z-score wow, alpha over 2 uh, sigma over E squared. Now this alpha over 2 part, you know, you're not really doing any mathematics with that. That's a subscript. It's just telling you what z-score to find. And so and I'll give an example here in just a second. So let me write that out so it's not quite so sloppy. So your sample size is always determined by your z-score. And I'll just leave z-score alone there. And your standard deviation divided by how much error is required for your what you're doing and then squared. So we'll come back to that equation and, and try one here. So back to my ball bearings. So you are a ball bearing manufacturer and you need to find out with 95 percent confidence the mean of the entire population of ball bearings you produce at your factory that day. Wow that's a run-on sentence. You know that from a previous study the population standard deviation is 0.3 centimeters and the company buying your ball bearings want them to be within 0 0.05 centimeters. So um, they don't want much error in these. So here's your ball bearings if you're not sure what a ball bearing is. How many of these things do we need to go get? So we've got a jar and we need to fill it up. How many do I pick out of all of my ball bearings? So what we do then, we know my standard deviation is 0.3. We know my error is 0 0.05 centimeters, centimeters. And uh, we need the z-score of alpha divided by 2. Okay, so, whoops, sorry, I just bounced around on you. Bring that back down to meet us here. And what, uh, what we need then is a 95% confidence interval with that. Okay, a 95% confidence interval would be, you know, 95 divided by 2 which is uh, 44, you know, that's your alpha. So that would be 47.5%. So we're looking for 
um, 0.475 in your zero in your uh, z-score table in order to get that z-score. So let's uh, pull this up here. Lots of interruptions. So, um, so when you divide that out, you end up with a 0.475 for the z-score is what we're looking for. And so you pull up any standard normal distribution score um, and you look for the 0.475 in the uh -huh. table or you could go online again um, means I got this open we'll just and there is 0.475 and you follow it up and you follow it right so we're looking at 1.9 and this would be 1.96 for a z-score so now we can plug that into the formula so um, n is equal to your z-score times your standard deviation divided by how much error we need, all squared. So you plug all this stuff in and you get 1.96 times um, your standard deviation, which was 0 0.3, divided by the error they require, that their, their tolerances, and then square that. And so you do all this, you plug it in, and you get, uh, I'll just do it, so 1.96 times 0.3, and you get 0.588 divided by 0 0.05, and you get 11.76, and that has to be squared. And so you square that, let me find the squared button, and you get 138. Point three. So we need to take a sample of 140 ball bearings, or well, 139 ball bearings to be precise, to the nearest ball bearing. So around 139, you know, if you get 140, you're definitely going to hit the accuracy that you need. You'll be within 95% of the mean. And so now you can go do the confidence interval. You can go pick out your 139 ball bearings randomly. Make sure you, you know, it's a random drawing. Every, every ball bearing should have an equal chance of being picked. And uh, you're ready to set up your sample and take your measurements. So I hope this helps. And good luck and see you next time.